What's up, my peeps? It's your girl, Kit Kat. Kit, Kit, Kit Kat. And I am coming back to you with a different setting. Yeah, not your usual eat and chat video. Um, if you do follow me and you would have you would have seen my last video, um, I've decided that I just want to change up the content that I deliver to you guys. Um, I just decided that I do not want to just sit and eat like that because I retain weight easily and I well, I gain it and I keep it and I don't, I don't want to do that because I know I'll just be setting myself up for failure and I don't want to be bigger than what I am already am so I'm already on Weight Watchers and going to the gym so I mean it's just one of those things that I've decided that I just want to improve in my life and you know, I want to become healthier. So, I mean, I'm not saying anything is wrong with mukbangs at all anyway whatsoever. But for me, it's just not for me. So I decided that I just wanted to change my channel into a Christian YouTube channel. Man, the struggles though, y'all. Before I go any further, let me just say a prayer so that this video can turn out great and successful. Because it has been a struggle trying to do this. So, <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for watching over me at all times. Thank you for waking my viewers up every day. Um, please continue to bless us daily and watch over us daily. God, please bless me with the words that I need to put into this video to give to others that will encourage them in a way that will be pleasing to you and their souls. Um, I love you and I trust you, God. Please allow this video to turn out great and successful and get the response that's needed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, it was a struggle for me to, like, post this video. Not this video, but I have, ever since I decided to change my content over to, you know, the Christian YouTube channel, I have since made two videos but have you seen those videos no okay the first video i did i brought a brand new camera off of amazon it's a pretty good decent camera it's just i'm not like that much of a tech savvy individual so the first video i did i formatted my sd card and blah 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 i don't want to get into too much detail but i ended up accidentally deleting that video the second video i up recorded it and I put it on my computer and it had no sound on the computer but on the camera you could hear me so I was just a little confused it's just crazy how the devil just try to work against you when you're trying to do something for the Lord it's just so crazy but I didn't let that stop me I was like you know what I'm gonna keep on going I'm gonna keep on trying so right now I am using my computer and I do have lighting that I did buy them I feel like this it looks much better than my previous videos but if not oh well i'm still gonna get the word out there but um this is my bible that my lovely sister kim got me today it's so big and beautiful i actually have four bibles now i have three bibles that have been given me given to me by three of the mothers that have been in my life my real mom my adopted mom and my god mom and this is from my friend my friend slash sister Kim um but today I just want to share with you each video is going to be different topics but this video is going to be about how God introduced himself to me um God has this way of introducing himself to anybody that is close to him or believe in him or want to connect with him um, especially if he has a plan and a will for your life, which is for everybody. Some people just don't know it, so they just live how they want to live. But for me, God really has his hand on me. And the way he introduced himself to me was in a bizarre way. I was in eighth grade. I was about 13 years old. And I was growing up in Detroit, Michigan. And... In the middle school, I was in middle school because I was 13, so the middle school that I was went to, we had this balcony on the second floor that a lot of kids decided to jump off of and for fun and walk away and talk about it with their friends. 
So me being a weak little follower that I was, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna jump off this balcony too. Mm -hmm. I was with my friend at the time, I forgot her name, but she didn't encourage me not to. So I did it and make a long story short, I didn't get to walk away like everybody else did. I had to be carried away by two young men from my class and they were cute. So just imagine how embarrassing that was for me. So they carried me away to the office. I was limping around for about two or three weeks, probably longer than that. My, I was adopted and the lady that my mother, she was older, older to be exact. She was 59 years old when she adopted me and I am 30 years old today. Okay, so you do the math. Um, as to how old she is right now. She is long gone. She is resting in peace or resting in glory, shall I say. Um, but she was very, some of the stuff she did was just non-traditional, like taking kids to the hospital when they hurt themselves very badly. Instead, she would keep us home and do her home remedies. I mean, it didn't work like it should have because my ankle swelled up so bad. To this day, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I sprained it really bad or if it was a fracture or what it was. I know it wasn't broke because I could still move it. But when I would hang it in the air, my foot was supposed to be like this. Instead, it would just hang down like that. It was gross. Uh, she would put some type of liniment oil on it. And just I that was it. I stayed out of school for a few days and that hurt me really bad because I really love school. I couldn't stand in the school. But um, I didn't go to the hospital or anything. My sister at the time, she, my sister, my older sister, biological, was, we were adopted together and she would scare me and tease me and tell me that I was going to get gangrene in my leg and I was going to have to cut it off. I was terrified and I was easily persuaded back then. It kind of still is, but whatever. I guess you would say that's called gullible. I was very gullible. <laughs> so, I didn't know what else to do. I mean, my mom wasn't going to take me to the hospital, so I had no choice but to just sit there and endure the pain. It was so painful. So, she like, my mom used to like listen to the radio. Um, just talk radio, sometimes music radios, and this particular day i was just sitting there obviously because i couldn't do anything else <clears throat> the lady on the radio was talking and only words i remember to this day is the word pray i heard pray about three times and i knew what praying was because i went to, we grew up in a church so i knew that what prayer was basically so but I didn't have, I still didn't have a connection with God like I should have. I mean, I was 13 years old. Some people have that deep connection or really like that, but I didn't. And so, I just began to pray, asking God, I said, can you just heal my leg? Put it to where I can start walking again and going to school so that I can, you know, get out this house or whatever. And... A few days later, I could just, I kept praying every day, every day, every day. And several days later, I could tell that my prayer was working because the pain began to ease up and I was able to walk. Even though I was limping, I was able to walk. Whereas before, I couldn't do that. And so, I, I still can't believe I, she didn't take me to the hospital. kind of hurts me, but it is what it is. Um... I began to walk on my ankle and she took me to school the first few days but after that I had to walk to school limping and all yeah it was crazy like that that just gives you a piece of my childhood I didn't have such a great childhood I mean it was okay but it was not okay either um because I know all people out there had it worse than me but um I got teased in school for limping as well but I didn't care because I know my prayers was working and ever since that had happened, I had prayed every night to God. I couldn't go to sleep without saying my prayers. 
I just love the Lord, you know, and I still love him. But ever since that incident, I had prayed every single night. And it was, wasn't until I was grown that I realized that that was God's way of introducing himself to me. Like, I might have been in a bizarre and painful way, but look at Jesus. He suffered. He didn't do anything in life. So I know that what I went through was just a part of his way of showing his love for me because I had to, you know, get connected to him and somehow and whatever I was doing in my life wasn't ways that I was going to get connected to him. So he had to get my attention. So me jumping off a balcony on my second, at my middle school was his way of allowing me to get closer to him. That's what I believe at least. Like, God has his other ways that he get people's attention, but that was his way of getting my attention, and I just thank him for that. Um, I mean, because if it had not been for that, I wouldn't even know how to pray, or, you know, I wouldn't be connected to him like I am today. Uh, I'm not perfect, though. I am not perfect at all, anyway, whatsoever. It's days where I can easily just sit down and study the word and get closer to God, but I choose not to. You know, but I'm working on it, and I just thank God he led me to the decision of changing my channel up, you know, and, you know, just putting that word out there for him, you know, because a lot of people need to know about God and his goodness. Um, like I said, it was a struggle trying to even post a video and upload a video recorded. But it's just crazy how the devil just try to work against you when you want to do something good for the Lord. Um, I just thank God for his grace and his mercy. Lately, I have been feeling kind of down because I'm surrounded by a lot of people that just do whatever they want to do with their life. And it seems like they're just so happy. They're just so happy. But deep down inside, I don't know what they deal with behind closed doors. I don't know what problems they have on the outside. People try to make it seem like everything is so good, but it's not. And that's why it's so important to depend on God, you know? You have to depend on God for every single thing in your life. I'm talking about from what you eat to what you wear and where you go at in this life. What direction to turn, where to drive to, where to walk to, you know, anything like that. That pleases the Lord when we depend on him. Even down to who you date. A lot of people get into relationships and they don't seek the Lord and ask him, is this person for me? They just date this person and marry this person and then end up wondering why their relationship is not turning out in the way that it should turn out or they expect for it because they didn't seek the Lord. Like, how are you going to believe in God and not depend on him or ask him questions and get your answers from him like it's one thing to believe in him but it's also another thing to depend on him and utilize him a lot of people don't take advantage of the privilege that we have to turn to the lord for what we need in life you know like people you got people over to say yep i believe in god but then it stops there it doesn't go any further they just believe that's it but you gotta activate your faith you gotta activate your your wisdom and your privilege even go to him you know like i depend on god for every single thing i ain't gonna lie sometimes i do get discouraged because some things i pray for or ask for don't turn out the way i wanted to but i know that's just nothing but god's protection so if you believe in god you need to seek him for everything don't jump into relationships and then afterwards pray about it Pray before you get into that relationship so that you can know that what you're doing is the right thing to do. You got to trust the Lord. And whatever his answer is, whatever. if you don't like it, you still got to trust it. You know, you just got to trust in God because his answer is the best for us. And his way is the best for us. Especially if you're living a life and you're trying to please the Lord and live according to his will, you got to just take whatever he says. You just got to deal with it. And I'm speaking from experience. It's hard, but I rather live for the Lord and for the devil. I rather hold my hand with the God and then with the devil. That's just as simple as that. 
It's crazy because I have this Bible here, but then I also have my Bible here that my godmother gave me here on the side. You can't see it, but here. I got this case. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for to prosper you and to not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Jeremiah 29 11. See that, but um, I would just flip it and open, and I believe this is the scripture that God wants me to give to you guys. It fell open to, I didn't even turn to it, it just came open to that, and I just feel like He wants me to give this to you guys. It says, It's Jeremiah 17 7 through 7 through 8. It says, Blessed is the Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The part that really stuck out to me is when it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. It pleases the Lord when you trust in Him and give Him all your problems and your cares. Like, like I said, you may not like His answer, but take it to Him. Ask Him whether you should be in that relationship. Ask Him whether you should eat that cheeseburger or that apple. Ask Him whether you should wear that tube top or that full body shirt or a covered up body outfit. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Ask Him. Cause he will give you the answer i'm saying like if you've lost something god will lead you to it if you ask him in the name of jesus okay but i don't want to keep you too much longer i hope that i've encouraged you in a way that will bless you throughout the week and help you remember what i've told you i'm gonna try to upload as much as i can but i am a working individual and college student so i do have to squeeze in when i can but you know it's all good. I'm sure God will give me the time to do that, especially if I'm encouraging those in a way that's pleasing to him. So I love every individual that's watching. I hope that this encourages you, and I hope that you have a blessed and beautiful week. Bye, my Kit Catters.